Hey everybody, welcome into the Letterman Lounge. This is Letterman Live. It's Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint. This is a fun, casual conversation. Spring camp is over. The spring game was Saturday. A lot to discuss as Ohio State heads into the summer offseason. That's Justin Zwick, Nicole Cox, and Bobby Carpenter. I am Austin Ward. What do we think, Bob? That was a pretty nice little Saturday afternoon. It was. I uh, checked a lot of boxes. The quarterbacks, I think that everybody was looking at, you saw them all come in there. Sawyer, or not Sawyer, McCord, uh, Stroud, Miller. All of them looked like they belonged. Some varying levels of performance, but it wasn't like you said they're like, oh gosh, like burying balls in the mm-hmm. dirt, looked disheveled, like they didn't couldn't lead an offense. I mean, the worst part was Miller leading, you know, a nice drive and then throwing yep. a pick in the red zone. I mean, everyone else handled themselves pretty well. You got to see some flashes of those young receivers who looked tremendous. Yeah. Biggest thing was, I guarantee you, as they ran off the field, Ryan Day wipes his brow. <laughs> Everybody's still standing. Mm-hmm. We're good. All right, now we're ready to go. We can actually get a full summer in, go into a normal fall camp, mm-hmm. hopefully, and be able to get this team going. But the fact that the quarterbacks look like they held their own, no one played their way out of it, and then no one got hurt, I think are the two biggest takeaways for me. The first thing that he said when I kicked off the press conference, Nicole, was, I like hey, that they go yes. to you, humble hey, brag. Well, I know, <laughs> I loved that. I was like, Austin's first. I know, and I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't have any rooster stuff on on Saturday, Nicole, I'm sorry. But... Um, they stayed healthy, and they had fans, and the band was there. Those were the top three things. We're going to talk a lot about the players that were on the field, but you know, Ohio State had had injuries throughout spring, so just <coughs> nobody getting hurt. They didn't go tackle. That was what he was most concerned about. Yes, that's what he said in the press conference, and I completely understand that, especially after ha- being able to finally have like spring, full spring practice, f- winter, and um, I think that's why a lot of the guys looked a lot healthier, a lot mm-hmm. bigger yeah. than before. Um, Juice. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, full beefed up. I'm sorry, Nicole. No, no. <laughs> That's, and he said, like, they sound like modest goals. Like he's trying not to maybe talk about it. But before spring started, he said, well, we want to get 15 practices in. You don't take that for granted anymore after last year. You want to have a spring game. Then you want to be healthy. I know that they have more important goals that they don't want to maybe talk about as much publicly, Jay-Z. But that, you know, when you have that taken away they, the way they did last year, that is a big deal. You do want Oh, it's, it's a huge deal, um, especially for the amount of – young guys we have um, that didn't get that their first year and then you're adding more young guys on to you know so it's it's huge to just get those 15 practices um, you know you just get guys who are coming in acclimated to the way you run your program how you run your practices that sort of thing but then I've, uh, the young guys who yeah, I guess there would be what sophomores going into their sophomore year I don't going into their second the bonus, freshman year bonus yeah. year of eligibility yeah it's yeah. weird you know what to call those guys but I mean this they didn't get it I mean, I shouldn't say they didn't get a bunch of stuff done during the season because they were practicing. They were on scout team or doing whatever they could, but this was a chance for them to really hone in on their skills, you know, on the offense to show the coaches like, hey, I've been here for, you know, we, I've had six months under my belt. I'm, I'm This is 15 practices that I'm going to take and I'm going to, you know, get better on all that stuff that we learned during the season. So it's, it's a huge thing coming out, you know, kind of unscathed with, uh, you know, no injuries after the spring game is huge. Um, just a great day all and all around. I was there. It was great seeing people walking to the stadium. Uh, Beautiful new court you know, zip on. <laughs> it was <laughs> finally <laughs> uh, after all these months, almost a, oh, a year and a half. I finally got a Letterman it's Road. Sort of, I love it. It's sort of like zip. getting your black stripe. On. I think, I, gosh, it took a long time. I promise. I'm you get here Letterman Live. <laughs> when you put it like that, Austin, this long, I feel bad about my performance. Well, no, here on, no on Letterman. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make sure that they earn it. You don't want them to get too carried away. I get but it. You've actually already been in a lot of pressure situations. So it's just like the black stripe. It doesn't really mean anything. (laughs) Um, Anyway, we're going to talk a lot more about the quarterbacks and receivers that Bob Mm -hmm. mentioned. We'll talk about the defense as we go along. Right now, we're going to talk about Jay-Z's favorite Mm. fried pickles. pickles. Appetizer Tuesday. Um, Patio is open. Somebody... There's told people me out some there. kind of lie that there's going to be maybe snow accumulation this week. I don't believe that that's It's that's Ohio, possible. guys. It's Ohio. It just happens. It'll be fine. It's going to happen, and then hopefully it'll be the last of it. But Roosters is open late again. Mm-hmm. Appetizer Tuesday's coming yes. up. What else? What else is going on here, Nicole? Just give just, us the, the details. We're just excited. It's a beautiful day out, <laughs> and we're just excited to be open. And it just feels, you know, like after the game on Saturday, the – I've heard so many from so many people that the band being there <laughs> was like it just gave a piece of normalcy, you know, not only to have the fans, but the band as well, which is I mean, that's a big deal. So I think that started all of our week off. Great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to be honest. I, I watched the band at halftime. Like usually I get up and go do some yeah. stuff, but I'm like, all right. You know, they had like a college they didn't have their full uniforms on, obviously, but 
uh, it was great to see them go out there and perform and, yeah. you know, march around. It was awesome. You know, it, it was kind of weird on Saturday because, I mean, I was in the stadium all last year. It was empty. That was super bizarre. It was almost weirder to have 20,000 people and the way that they were spread <laughs> out. And because you looked around, and it's like, man, this place is empty. But it was also 20,000 people where most places in the country can't even hope to get that. And it would look, felt disappointing. I don't know what it's going to be like <clears> by <throat> September when Oregon's in there, but – you hope that all that stuff comes back. It seems like we're trending in the right direction. You can tell that Ryan Day talked about that in that first answer. Like, man, hope this thing's full again by September because he can see Alabama's going to have that. Clemson's going to mm-hmm. have that. Uh, I think he's trying to already push for that, Bob, but General Bob, to get this the yeah. full well, again. Because he saw the article that came out where myocarditis in the 3,000 athletes that tested positive occurred at less than a 7%. So one of the doctors speculates, yeah, probably 20% of the players tested positive. Of that, 0.7% had any type of myocarditic event. And the ones that did were ones who had severe symptoms and also usually had an underlying heart mm-hmm. condition prior. So it's like, we don't even need to test these guys anymore. What are we doing? Because I'm like, uh, 20% times 0.7%. And then when you also have the risk factors of, oh, okay, you already had a heart problem. Maybe this, maybe we should look at this more. But I wanted to take that art, that study, and wad it up in a ball and get about 15 of them. <laughs> I'll save Christina Johnson because she was pushing hard to get it here. And, and one for the Nebraska. We'll get 13 and throw it at every other person, president's face and want, save one for Kevin Warren. <laughs> it feels like last April game. Like last Saturday was normal, and we were just right back here talking about uh, shutdown again. Let's move on from that. Um, so – Buckeye leaves. Nicole, I know the notebook is full. You're going to start, okay? Yes, that's fine. We So um, I think the freshmen, definitely the freshman players, it was so exciting getting to see them, and I think they really showed everyone what they can do, especially, you know, Travion Henderson and Jack Sawyer. Jack Sawyer, I mean, he had five sacks as the defensive end, and just because they didn't do a lot of running in the game, yeah. but, you know, he's that five-star freshman from Pickerington, <coughs> so it was really great, and I, you know, as I was studying for today, um, <laughs> I I kept hearing his name over and over again in the press conference, and, you know, even um, Zach Harris. Zach Harrison. Harrison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He even said he's like, he's legit. I mean, I mean, people were, everybody kept asking about him. So he definitely stands out and I'm going to get, so I guess I'm giving my Buckeye leaf to one of the <laughs> obvious people, but yeah. yeah. Well, that's why you go first. Okay, you, thanks, you guys. Wait, wait <laughs> well, to it. It's about performance. So, I mean, it's, he's obvious because yeah. he had a good game. Yeah. So no I mean, right there, Nicole, you're right in line. He had a good game. Bob, who you got? So I've, you know, I've kicked this around a little bit, um, trying to figure out, you know, there's a bunch of, a multitude of receivers that you could go with, you know, whether it's a Buka, a Beca, a Mecca, a Buka, whether, you know, Starvin Marvin Jr. out there <laughs> playing well. I mean, like even some of the older three guys, you know, outside of Jamo Williams dropping his first attempt, and then the next thing you know, he plays pretty well after that. Yep. Um, you know, I would probably, I'm going to give it to Kyle McCord because I think coming in, he had probably the lowest expectations mm-hmm. of anybody. And when you come out there and you're on the play action, he sees the he sees the free safety jump down low, and like mm. you know what, we're going downtown first nope. play. We're going <laughs> like, for it. This this I mean, you got to think like this is he's a should be a senior in high school. You're in the shoe, and that, granted there aren't the fans there, and it's just the spring game. It's still the shoe though, but it's still the shoe, <laughs> it's still and there the were still shoe, fans and, and band. You're still playing against mm. other guys that are on scholarship. You know, pretty good, uh, pretty good secondary. And to make that read and say, okay, everything lined up. Because so oftentimes you see guys force it into coverage. It was the right throw. He put it on a dime and played pretty well. You know, he had the strip sack, you know, from Sawyer and some different things. But I thought he carried himself very well. As we've talked so much about Stroud and Miller going back and forth. I was just really impressed that I think he you know, maybe played his way a little bit more into that mix and tightened it up, given the fact that he has the least experience in that offense. Yeah. Is that your I, guy? I agree. No, I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I, don't I wasn't going to take a quarterback. You know, just I, to, I figured we'd, we'd have plenty of time to come back. Well, yeah, I figured we'd talk quarterbacks at some point. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go just a little bit different. I'm going to give it to two guys, Olave and Wilson, because those They're are good. two guys who went out and made made both of them made really. I mean, I can think one, each of them had one nice catch. Olave in the be- very beginning, first series, I think it was. Or Stroud, yeah, it was Stroud's first series. Yeah. He threw it down, went up over, over Demario. 
Which got the ball. Let's be real. I said this last week. It's just not going to work. No, I don't think so. He uh, was in the right position. He, he, was, he was there. And, but that's the thing. You, that's when you're a young quarterback like that, you can take those chances, right? Because you know you have an All-American out there mm-hmm. who, one, is probably going to come back and make sure it's at least broken up if he doesn't catch it. Yeah. And that's a ball that the DB could have made a play on. Eh, no, thank you very much. Uh, you could have sat him down right after that one. And then Garrett goes up on the next drive down to the ball you were just talking about from McCord. Yeah. When knocked at him, but he goes up, makes a play, shows you, you know, and that's just, I think that's big for these young guys to see two vets who could, I guess only one of them could have went to the league, but they don't have to be here right now. They're out they on a spring to, game. Yeah, they, they don't have to be playing. They could have probably told Coach yes. Day, we're good. But, Get I mean, you, young those young guys are seeing that, like, geez, these guys are out here getting after you know. So, I, I think that's good for the room uh, for these young wide receivers, and, you know, it's just – just because they're older and you expect it from them, I mean, they're still going out and making plays, so that's why they get mine. Isn't it crazy that you have those two? That's the best tandem coming back in the country. And then Jackson Smith and Jigba makes a crazy touchdown grab down there in the end zone, adjusting to a ball, throwing one hand on it. Julian Fleming wasn't healthy out there, but he was last you know, last year's number one rated wide receiver recruit in the country. You talked about Egbuka. He was number one this year. Uh, Marvin Harrison, who, I mean, I guess no one should have been surprised that the son of a Hall of Famer <laughs> exactly. came physically ready and with sharp routes and strong mm-hmm. hands ready to go. I mean, and that's not even it. You could still keep going beyond those guys. It's, it is an insane amount of talent. And it, it, this sounds like cliche. Like it almost doesn't matter which one of these three guys wins a quarterback job because you have so much talent to throw to. You just have to be able to throw it within. Oh, and then you have six guys in the backfield that can tote the rock. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the quarterback really probably doesn't have to do much. Just in don't this go offense. mess it up. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think that, you know, Ryan Day bristled a little bit at the suggestion that he only needed a game manager, and that comes with those, you know, negative connotations because mm-hmm. it's also almost an insult to guys with 14 recruiting stars to their name, yeah. two five stars and a four star. They can go win games themselves, but. Boy, it sure gets pretty easier, much easier, Nicole, when you've got that amount of talent to work with. Yes, and I I go back to what I always say, you know, when one player has, you know, a bad game and they make a mistake, it's it's a team it's a team effort. It's a team effort. So, you know, it's like goalies in sports, you know, everyone's mad if they don't, you know, stop the goal, but it's like, what about everybody else that didn't stop it from getting to the goal, you know? And so I do, I think that's, I'm very excited for this season. The talent is absolutely amazing. And like you said, the quarterbacks, they, I mean, they don't have as much pressure on them because they have an amazing team around them. Yeah. And I don't think the game manager aspect, it's really just don't, you know, limit your mistakes. Get the ball to the open mm-hmm. guy. Like, you don't necessarily have to go out there and make the great play. Now, those guys will develop into that. Mm-hmm. But you're going to have guys that are running open and guys that will go make plays for you. Just get them, get the ball in their hand and don't make a mistake. And that, to, that to me, is not a negative connotation at all. It's mm-hmm. just make take the play that's there. You don't have to make something superhuman. There are times where you know, you've seen guys in the past that they have to make a superhuman human play mm-hmm. just due to the lack of playmakers around. Well, that's not <clears> the case on this team. So they can grow into it and be a little more growers than maybe showers early on. Yeah, I think that game manager label is more when you're in the NFL. You know, like, hey, he's a game manager. We know he's not going to go out and do much. But these are soft- or these are freshmen, sophomores in college, right? I mean, we don't know what they're going to be like at this level. They're all managers. They're from when they Well, yeah, start. I mean, yeah, exactly. They're just out there trying to say, man, I mean, I don't know how many times I went up to the line, hey, Nick. We good to run this play? <laughs> All right, yeah, we're good. You know, because you got you got to make checks, and you got so many things going on. You know, when you're out there in the huddle, and you're trying to remember the play to say it back to the guys. You're trying to get up to the thing. You got this play clock. I mean, there's a lot going on. So, I mean, to to say a game manager for a young guy like that when you have all this talent, that, that's just just saying what Bobby said. Don't mess it up. Take the open throw. You know, don't try to force things. We have enough talent to help you. Kind of makes me sad that Nicole's like. We just went through this spring. We got a spring game. So excited to see the potential for all that. And then the, when you add in some more healthy guys and in the summer, and we still have to go f- four more months from now yeah. until we get to see a game. Like mm-hmm. <clears throat> spring, spring practice is over. The worst stretch of uh, and now athletics. Just changes the from now until football like, What season. are we going to do? We're, we'll still have a lot to talk about. Okay. There will be a lot of things happening. That's that's good to be reassured. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> what, anything else that people need to know? We got fried pickles on Tuesday. Fried this pickles, week. yes. People mm. just come in. The weather's nice. And, you know, with kids' sports picking back up, 
It's mm. it definitely is easy just to order food from Roosters mm-hmm. um, online. They'll text you when it's ready. Pick it up. That way, it makes dinner easy. I know we have practice tonight, so <laughs> I think I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> so Boom, there you go. Yeah. What are we at? Like we're at one year of the app or mobile ordering. Feels like I know. Right about this time, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was a good thing. We were working on online ordering, so the good thing of COVID, it shoved us into <laughs> launching it. You know, it did because yeah. I think you work on things to try to perfect them. But it's like, just launch it and fix the little <laughs> things, you know, because it, it might have, who knows how long it would have taken for us to actually launch yeah. it. Got to adapt. That's what this is all I mean, about. What was it? A good plan executed now is better than a perfect plan executed in the future. Yes. General Patton mm-hmm. uh, uh, via Colonel Schlegs. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I have definitely learned that as I get older. So That was a lot more succinctly done than if Schlegs had been sitting right here. <laughs> you know, Austin, <laughs> <Yeah>. listen. <laughs> The, the best plan has got to be It's got to be your bull. No, wait, it's got to be your bull. This is a whiteboard <laughs> plan that you execute right now, then you adjust later. Schlegs, we miss you. It's we not do. mac and cheese bites this no. week. But that's something that needs to fill our summer. Schlegs need to get back up here from Jacksonville for time to time. We're going to let Nicole go do her day job. We're going to bring Spencer in here and talk a lot more about the spring game and the quarterbacks when we come back on Letterman Live, which is brought to you, as always, by Roosters. Roosters is one of the unique companies that we deal with. They're involved in everything we do, from our personal foundation to also the Cancer Research Fund. And that's from the Buckeye Cruise from Cancer to all the events leading up to the Buckeye Cruise. They donate back to different organizations that are near and dear to their heart. And we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long, long time. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. All right, welcome back into Roosters. This is Letterman Live, and that's Spencer Holbrook joining us as we roll along here and wrap up the spring game on Saturday. I don't know who won. They changed it from Scarlet and Gray. Well, what's that about? I, Can we get an answer I, on that? Quarterbacks were playing on different teams. That's what, <laughs> James, they're talking Ooh, like, wait, he were just out there with these guys. <laughs> and like, you know what? That, that's the thing with the quarterbacks. But I, you would have to appreciate that, though, Jay-Z, being uh-huh. a quarterback. Like, hey, get in there with those guys. Mm-hmm. You get in there with those guys. Like, yeah, everybody at least has the same. Guaranteed uh, the yeah. steak dinner, right? If you play for both teams. <laughs> or guaranteed not to get either. Yeah. <laughs> That's a trust. Something somehow. I forget, I forget the specialist. They would like rotate them back and forth. Like they automatically get the win. He goes, no, they automatically get a loss. I'm like, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Those poor specialists. Yeah. Um, they're, they're the real champions. Yeah. Grinding well, over there. Well, how about the real champion from specialist Rowan McCullough? Yeah. Yes. Hey. You have the long Go snap. play some linebacker for us. Hey, first you give him credit for being willing to do it. And he... he Played pretty well. It's probably his dream to play linebacker. But also... It's like Zach Boren. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But also that you have to do it tells you... We've yeah. Ohio yeah, State's where they're at right now. They're at linebacker. That's what Ryan... You know, everyone's like, oh, there's no tackling. And I talked to him looking around. You start counting up the guys. I'm like, you have like four or five guys that you're expecting to play the entire time. Yeah. It's not we have four guys after we take out our starters. <laughs> it's four... Like yeah. four or five healthy bodies, and one of those guys is Reed Carrico, who just got here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's crazy as as healthy and as talented as we as Ohio State is the wide receiver position. <coughs> it's not that they're not a talented linebacker; they just didn't, didn't well, have seemingly anybody. every other position. I yeah. mean, on the offensive side, anyways, you got three quarterbacks, six running backs, all these receivers, and you got four linebackers that played on Saturday. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was nuts. That put it in perspective right there, Spencer, how much work has got to be done. I mean, you're going to get a healthy Dallas camp back for training camp. Mm-hmm. Not sure exact timeline on Mitchell Melton, but I mean, Ohio State was always going to need to get some experience out of the transfer portal, but Saturday was a clear reminder of the urgency for that. Yeah, and you remember that Ryan Day said that Mitchell Melton's was a, a long-term injury, and you wondered you know, the severity of that and where, where things go from there. But that just – all eyes just immediately need to fo- need to shift from – Watching four linebackers warm up before the spring game immediately to the transfer portal and, and what what's there and what's available and I think this is the fifth straight show we've said Henry to O to O now but I it, still don't know how to say it but it, I I man, think I have I read it two two right. this morning <laughs> but he is, he becomes that much more important and Ohio State should have just somebody should have texted him and said hey watch this spring game because there's a spot for you on this roster if you want one because he's that important I think he's one of these pieces that could be you know what are the missing pieces to get this team over the hump. An all SEC linebacker could be that guy Isn't that, that could help them you that were much. Talking about an SEC linebacker coming to Ohio State to play next year. I mean, one I mean time, think about that when we were in yeah. school. Like you were stuck there. Yeah, I mean, you, had, <laughs> you probably had one or two guys transfer in. I mean, it's kind of like bringing an Anthony Schlegel. You know, when yeah, you need to, when you need to get true. something, you go 
portal shop, and Schlegs might yeah. be the guy to talk about. I mean, <laughs> his escape from the Air Force Academy might be like escape from Saigon. It might be one of the great stories ever. Never <laughs> pre told. pre portal. Free portal. Free yeah. portal. He did that the old fashioned way. <laughs> crawling under a barbed wire fence. <laughs> digging his hole out, gnawed his arm off out of the trap to get out of there. Is that how it was? Basically. <laughs> that's had two hundred and twenty demerits. Well yeah, I thought they might have said, Hey, <laughs> you got too many of these. That's that legendary uh toughness. Uh, Spencer, did you have somebody that we didn't name for a buckeye leave that you wanna mm. shine that spotlight on? Uh I'm gonna take Ryan Watts. Uh, the, the secondary is also an area where I think Ohio State could have used a good spring, and Ohio State did not have a good spring. When you when you take out Cameron Brown, who was never going to be in the spring, and then you take out Seven Banks, and then some of the guys that you wish you had on campus already this early enrollees aren't there yet. J.K. Johnson and, and Jordan Hancock can be contributors early, but I think Herbie. I think Ryan they were in the stands on Saturday, by the way, but. Yeah, but they weren't allowed to talk to anybody, but that's a different story. But Ryan Watts is a guy who, who looked pretty confident in coverage. He got he got more comfortable being able to play in the horseshoe in front of some fans. He didn't get to do that at all last year. and He really got very little reps with the, with the amount of either blowouts, lack thereof, or just the amount of games that Ohio State had. And so I think Ryan Watts, if he can continue to get some confidence, uh, you know, the interception was, was big for him. I, I think he gets a Buckeye leaf from me. Ryan Watts is like six seven playing corner. He looks like Kevin Durant out there. He's I got mean, those pterodactyl arms, man. He It's crazy. Like I know we like tall corners here, but the first time I saw him when he came in, I'm like, is this guy like a <laughs> underdeveloped like outside backer? Because he's like I mean, he's almost my height and he's long. Like I mean, high hips, runs pretty runs really well. You know, the question is can he bend and you know stick in coverage enough against maybe guys that are a little smaller with short range quickness. And he did a great job. He was on Garrett Wilson there, and I thought he played pretty well. But also Legend Cavallos didn't play, who's had a pretty good spring. I mean, there's just – Court Williams. Court Williams, you know, a.k.a. Jailhouse. Um, his nickname that uh, I read on his recruiting report when they came in. But he – I mean, he physically – those guys physically look good. Uh, you just hope that, you know, this summer – and this is the thing that we can get into a little bit, Austin, because I know that you've got your you know, ear to the track when it comes to the Big Ten – and really the NCAA, you know, Mark Emmert, I guarantee you, is diligently working on this as we speak. He's the hardest working man in America, earns his salary every single day. But what is his makeup person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he, uh, to figure out if they try to expand, like, off-season contact with the coaches to say, hey, you know, we had this disjointed stuff as things begin to open up. Mm -hmm. Can we do a couple of, like, non pal like, lack of a term, like, OTA days like they do in the NFL where – Hey, you come in here, we get four hours or something, or you know, two hours on field, two hour meeting. Because really, the summer's when they're the least busy anyway. It's it, the schedule is so ridiculous oh. with how it's flipped. Like the guys all stay here. I think that's the key that you're mentioning there, right, Bob? Is that it's changed a lot since even you guys were around, where everyone is on campus working out the whole time. Not saying that you guys weren't that you didn't do it, but well, it was technically voluntary. You could there yeah. was like one or two guys that would still kind of leave. <laughs> Through the mid '90s, it's when it all kind of shifted. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's been a m more realization and more coaches pushing, you know, for that activity uh, because of what you're talking about the the quote unquote voluntary. You might as well let the NCAA have some oversight or put some restrictions on it because otherwise, <laughs> they, I mean, Michigan's dealt with that problem their, on their own with how much you're going to count and how much you don't count. But you'd rather have the coaches. They've slowly allowed them to do more stuff like without a football or go out and, and run some drills in the summer or do some meetings but what's what's the harm in it to let them do a little bit you'll more? be ruining these kids so yeah. take away from their academic yeah. experience austin so they they can class go, that they have work a part-time job these or, are intercollegiate <laughs> student athletes the integrity of the game austin integrity yeah. of the game. out of an abundance of caution and care <laughs> that's a great point you do have to be safe um myocarditis but, is real it is real but to a very small fraction of people. You think it would make them safer, safer if you actually did some more yes. OTAs? And it's the safest place they can be. Get them ready for football. Give them eight days, two-hour meetings, two hours on the field. Yeah. Do like two days a week you know, for four weeks. I mean, As opposed to Jay-Z having to sit there and text all the receivers and be like, well, yeah, I mean, that's just what you can that, – that, that was our summer program, right? We'd have lifting in the morning, lifting, yeah. running, and then it'd be, hey, we're meeting back here at 5, 6 o'clock, you know, Seven on seven. Guys who would show up would show up. Guys who wouldn't wouldn't. You know, and you know so that's what it was. They'd kind of make up a script. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd have yep. to kind of figure it out. It puts a lot of the players, and it's good leadership to yeah. work on situations. Oh, yeah. 
you know, but then you have arguments about this and that and what was what penalties were being called. The offensive line, you know, D line would probably be down there for like ten minutes. And then they're like, yeah. all right, guys, they're we're lounging going. around in the end zone <laughs> while we're at the other end throwing <laughs> seven on seven. No joke, because it's right that what do you then go around like, hey, we're gonna head up to Rooster. Yeah. You guys wanna join yeah. us afterwards? I'm like, yeah. Dude, it's like 520. We warmed up for 10 minutes. Like, oh, yeah, we talked about our uh, schemes. We're good. Like, All right, like, we'll see you guys later. You're not even going to shower, are you? No, we're good. We're going to miss Appetizer Tuesday. Yeah, yeah right. right now. Exactly. Zwick did uh – did the offense coordinator ever accidentally just you know oh, leave there was a script out there? Uh, they just leave a script out there for you guys? Definitely scripts left around. Because, I mean, you got to think <laughs> there's always those scripts with practice so you can go back and watch film, you know where you're at, you know, type thing. So you definitely would be able to go off of those now. You know, by the time, you know, our junior, senior year, you just kind of went from your head and called what you wanted to call or, you know, figured that out. But, uh, you know, we, we always had good turnouts, I feel like, yeah. for that for that kind of stuff. We took uh, took it serious, you know. As, as serious as we could, but and uh, the other thing is, like, you're not wearing helmets. Yeah, it's so, not like, necessarily safe. It's not. Like, can people laugh? I'm like, yeah, right, man. When you're trying to like play and work on press mm-hmm. coverage without a helmet on, it's a great recipe for a broken nose. Mm-hmm. And so, at least if you did it like or concussion, o- diving concussion, for a ball oh, yeah. or running into somebody, like it's, you let the guys put like the little spider shell pads on, you put a helmet on, and you make it safer. And then you have coaches and train. Also, like, yeah. kind of have a trainer out there. Kind but, of, yeah. Like, it's not really, you know, it's not really scheduled, so they put mm-hmm. water out and kind of be there. But it'd be better if, like, there was the yeah. oversight because the guys are going to do it and they want to get better. So put some tight boundaries on it so it's not like, hey, guys are coming in from 8 to 4. Yeah. Say, all right, you want to get in there at 6, you lift, you have meetings, boom, we're at 1130, we're eating lunch, you guys are out of here. Yep. Like, perfect, boom. Where's the loss? Get it on a whiteboard, program, uh, plan it out. <laughs> all right, so for you – for those three quarterbacks that'll be trying to, you know, organize, go through those seven on sevens that Ryan Day said he was going to take this competition into training camp. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. They're all three capable of leading Ohio State to a Big Ten title, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know. Ryan Day is coming on the Morning Juice Tuesday at six thirty. He be might breaking some bombshell news about Jagger he, Lareau? He might he might reveal who the starting quarterback is. Oh, okay. Oh, jeez, well, well, that's stay, a tease. Stay tuned to Bob on Tuesday morning. In I'll case see if I can got, pry that out. Got of the him. scoop on something that that I don't on the starting <laughs> quarterback. He always does though, because he lives inside the Woody. So I have to try and keep up with him. Yeah. I my guess. No one out scoops him, man. He's like uh, he's like Ben and Jerry's over there. I think like giving away their ice cream for free now. I think the out. I mean, you guys can disagree with me if you want, but I think that we know how this competition is going to end. Uh, it's still competitive. It's tight. All three are very good, but C.J. Stroud was the backup last year. He had the lead going to the front drills at the start of March. He stayed there for the three open practices, and then he had a performance that did nothing to take away from being that guy uh, on Saturday. A- am I wrong? I mean. Kyle McCord certainly exceeded my expectations for his first spring game. I think that's why so many people are talking about it because CJ basically just did what he was expected mm-hmm. to do. Um, that, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Jack Miller or Kyle McCord. The guy that was in the lead is still in the lead. I just think that's how it is. Because you didn't really see anything that would that lead it to be change, right. changed. Like if, one thing, if Stroud went out there and was, you know, seven for eighteen, skipping with, balls to people. Yeah, just yeah. misreads, throwing it right to you know, misreading coverages. And there were some inaccuracy issues, but the biggest thing is all three of the guys at least looked like they had a firm command of what was going on. Now, yeah. probably a fairly limited playbook, but yeah. you know, and Stroud being the guy, obviously, who you felt the most confident in, but he none of the guys played their way out of it. I really it was the only interception was that Miller's. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, that's it. I mean. So it's a 50-50. No, it's a dumb ball. Yeah, it's kind of a miscommunication yeah. back shoulder, not in the end zone. I mean, everybody looked pretty good. Now, the secondary wasn't great, so, I mean, that probably plays into it. But I think Stroud, you know, like you said, he held serve, if you will. I think there was another one that Miller threw <laughs> on that on his second drive that Lathan Ransom probably yeah, got a hand. put in <laughs> dig, uh, Yeah, And that would have really been – That would have been in pick six. Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. – those, those stuck with me. But, again – and I have to be reminded of this just like everybody else, that it was one practice. Mm-hmm. It was not a live practice compared to what happened the week before. So you know, we can't make definitive judgments on it. But the one guy that was supposed to be the best yeah. had a nice day. I thought that throw, Jay-Z, you can tell me. It's that Justin Fields play, the rollout and Olave. Yeah. Gets oh, yeah, we've seen that how many times, right? You have to be able to op- operate that play, and yeah. C.J. Stroud did that. Yeah, I, I think uh, I came away I, walking from the stadium. I texted my buddies who I knew I was there, and I said, I said Stroud, McCord. And that's just kind of how I walked away. It was one day, one practice. Uh, 
I mean, I thought CJ did a lot of great things, threw the ball nice, made some good reads. I saw little things of, uh, you know, which aren't anything big, but helping guys up off the pile, you know, carrying out his face, getting, you know, doing all that sort of thing. You know, I, I grew up a big Peyton Manning fan, so uh, that's big, big stuff to a quarterback, um, to me. And he didn't do it all the time, but he did it some. And I, you know, I noticed that. He threw good balls. Jack Miller, I thought, threw, I thought he had a lot of confidence. Uh, that ball we were just talking about, that was a long throw to the sideline from the other hash. Yeah. Almost got there. You know, he had the confidence to do it. He knew he had to go up over top of a guy coming underneath. You know, he just didn't get enough on it. Uh, there's another one. He did a nice job moving somebody, came back for the dig, threw it behind him. You know, it's just a couple of those things is probably why I didn't feel so strong about him coming out of the day. Um, you know, I think he got to throw the ball a little bit more too, but, uh, you know, I thought Kyle just came out that first ball we talked about earlier. I mean, for a freshman coming in, Hey man, he's calling, he's calling that in the huddle saying, they're about to make me, they're about to make me throw this downfield to Garrett Wilson. If this safety does what, you know, we think he might do. And you know that it wasn't a come down hard. It was a, he peeked at the crosser and he knew right then I got to let it fly. And he, and he did and put the ball on him. So I, I thought he I thought he played good um, for, for for a freshman. I thought he came out strong. I thought all three showed confidence. But I I thought those two guys probably would be how it would how how I felt it would shake out come come fall. I think part of what I saw was that it seemed like they let all the guys go to their strengths first because Kyle McCord is a big arm who who likes to throw the ball downfield. You saw that throughout his high school career. And so the first play, they let him throw the ball down the field. You know, Jack Miller and C.J. Stroud, they kind of worked them into their system the way that, that those two kind of like to operate as we know them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Leave and, them up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. you kind of just, just get their confidence going. And Bluff it. Yeah, I'm so, sure that deep ball probably wasn't supposed to be a deep ball, and they oh. might have been thinking it, you know, that crosser or somebody I, on the sideline. I was surprised. You come I'm out guessing first throw in the shoe, and you're gonna. I'm it. guessing that he took that shot, saying, "Oh, I got him. I'm going <laughs> to do it. I'm going for it." You know, and, and he did. He did have a smile right after that throw, so you could tell that he was kind of feeling himself. Mm-hmm. First throw in, in the horseshoe, he, he completes the deep ball. But I, the, the throw that I just kept going back to, and I was, I was rewatching the game a couple times. C.J. Stroud had somebody right in his face up the middle, and and you know his he knew throw. he knew he wasn't going to get hit, but he delivered it across he the middle. He did get hit. He, no, he did get hit. I think yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, play, yeah, maybe he did get knocked down. He got, he got bumped, and and he still completed threw, the ball across the ball. middle. Yep. It, it looked like one of those even more I think than the rollout did. One of those Justin Fields where he's in the pocket, he, he knows he's going to get knocked down. He still delivers the ball over the middle, and you just saw the confidence come out of him from there, and you knew you could tell. This is a guy who, who kind of just gets it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what the throw that sticks with me the most. And I felt like the opposite thing happened to Jack Miller with the pick and then the throw to Ransom. From the rest of the day, it just seemed like he's going to take the check down and be cautious. Mm-hmm. And, like, and that's why you, you, know, you don't want to put too much stock in one day. But you know, I don't know that – and I, I'm not as qualified maybe to analyze it as you guys are, but it just looked like he, he was no, that confidence was gone for the day and he was going to make the smart move from the rest of the way out. And there's nothing wrong with that either Mm-mm. if you're trying to avoid no, doing the turn. They threw a lot of the 10-yard sideline throws. They, they, I mean, they ran fish, which is what we called fish back in the day, probably 20 times. And that's just a home route right in front of the quarterback, curls, flat routes. You know, they ran – I mean, they ran that out of different formations, I mean, all day long. So that's pretty easy read. You know, you boom, boom, you pick a side, you go to oh, it. And especially when you're just seeing single high three. Well, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know <laughs> – but, I mean, they ran that play, I swear, you probably about 20 times that day, you know, in that first half. And, you know, it's just something easy for – it's something easy for the quarterbacks. You know, it's an easy read. You get out here. If you don't like your home route, you go here. Who? What's, what's that flat defender doing? And you make a decision off of him. Are you suggesting that Ohio State has an offense that's more than one read? <laughs> I mean, that's, well, that's news to a lot. I think of they people. just put it in. I mean, they had 15 <laughs> practices to get those, you know, kinds of plays in uh, there for this good. year. So you now know, they don't. I think Ryan has heard all yeah. the. I think he's heard all that. So he's like, man, I got to start putting two and three progressions. Yeah, get uh, more, get more creative. And, yeah, no doubt. Use the spring to their advantage. Yeah, uh, Bob, if you were in that locker room, would you have wanted to head into? Sp- to summer knowing who the starting quarterback was or at least officially how, where do you come down on managing that i think the players always want to know they want certainty uh but the reality is too like when those guys are battling you can battle some in the spring but you're still not practicing every day mm-hmm. again it stinks now in camp i mean it's nice because they don't have two a days anymore but like the rhythm of going out you're practicing multiple times a day consecutive days like spring it's on a day, off a day, got lifts and meetings, but it's not like you're going out there every day. So you can kind of ride the momentum of how you're doing. And so guys really have a good feel about how well you're playing. So I I do think as a player, you always want to know whether, hey, is it this guy, is it that guy? Where you're at. Where you're at. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, 
in the spring, it's so hard to do that just because of the way the practice structure is set up. No coach is going to say, hey, we, let's just go uh, seven straight, seven straight, and then we'll play. Like, that's not <laughs> – that's not how it works. Yeah. Or even like, you know, five, four, five, five, four, and then the spring game. Like these guys now they, they elongate this thing till I mean Urban, it would be like six yeah. weeks. But like how spring break right in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Spring break, oh I have a couple practices, then spring break, then we come back. I'm sure they have no fun on spring break. Like, my goodness, you guys have gobbled up all of spring. Like it's terrible in this nice weather. And you know what the one winner was? The weather. The fans. Everybody that was out there. It was mm. beautiful. And as you know, Justin and I have joked before about you know some of the yeah. terrible spring games, like the weather we might get Wednesday, where it's like it was so nice. I had a sunburn. I have a sunburn, and now I'm getting snowed on and rained on. Why is it like this? Yeah, I bet that better not be real. We got to keep playing golf at this time of year in yeah. Central Ohio. Mm. Uh, get out the yellow balls, man. Well, <laughs> don't don't worry about what kind of balls I have, Bob. Um, my boss had a special request that we Ooh. close the show with somebody who's not being talked about coming out of the spring <coughs> game. So mm -hmm. we awarded the Buckeye Leaves to the Stars. Uh, Spencer, we'll start with you. Somebody who did not get enough attention for what they did on Saturday. I'm going to go with Craig Young and Ronnie Hickman, just the bullet position. because Hicks too. He's like Schlegs over It's now listed on the roster. It was like the unicorn. You didn't know if it existed or not. Now it's actually on the roster, the bullet position. And you saw two linebackers and a bullet on the field. Maybe that's because the depth is so poor right now on the roster. But also, that you see, you see a couple things in the spring game that, is that real? I think it is. I think the bullet is real. So that's something that's not getting talked about enough. The bullet could add another layer to the versatility of this defense. That's what I'm going to go with. Craig Young looks like he was made in a video game. And when that when he deflected that ball, I swear it bounced off of him like twenty five yards. Like the physics didn't apply to him on that play. It was that guy is a freakish athlete. Gravity doesn't apply, man. That's <laughs> that's the reality. He's like got a little Chuck Norris to him. Um, <laughs> the guy that I think has had a really solid spring and probably didn't. The linebackers, when you get into those short mid, you know, short passing game stuff, and you're playing the same coverage quarterbacks. Oh. Cover three, throw it to the tight end. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, the look of there. I'm going to throw over mm -hmm. here for seven yards. You can't blitz. You can't play man. You're yeah. not doing anything. I mean, it almost becomes like monotonous. Yeah, it's not set up for the defense to have any no. kind of a good day. <laughs> it's like, and even for the quarterbacks, like, all right, like, I'm not getting any stimulation, not a lot of stimulation here. Like, yeah. I'm not reading. I know what you're doing. <sighs> you Girl know, flat. Awesome. Girl <laughs> flat. Like, there's no, that's not like Kyle McCord, right? Push that thing down the field. Mm -hmm. If you're going to, if you guys are going to want to try to jump something, let's go get it. Because there's always a deep route. It's just the reality of how often someone's going to be nosy and try to go steal something else. Usually that happens later, not at the beginning. Uh, but for me, I think, you know, Eichenberg had a really good spring. Um, they needed some stability at that position. You know, they got Taraja Mitchell there, you know, uh, Dallas Gantz a little bit beat up. You got Cody Simon filling in. But Eichenberg's been around. He's been hurt. But watching him practice, like, moves really well. He's very instinctive. Uh, I think he's going to bring a little bit more speed to that position. So I'm pretty excited with what he's doing. And he moved well in coverage and everything on Saturday. Jay-Z. Still, try <laughs> Still okay. trying to think of somebody. I've got – Mark uh, Pantone for yeah. recruiting all. I want to talk guys. about our special teams. Special teams because okay. I don't feel like not. I don't feel like we want. I mean, they they're shouldn't just, be talked about after that. that they're after just that day. They're, they're just teams, coach. You but we got we got we got a a punter from Australia, right? Who's going to be filling in? Didn't didn't did punt not the ball very well. punt the ball very well. I I didn't feel. It I don't know. The, was the have you guys seen anything? <laughs> have you guys seen anything this spring on our on our punter? I mean. <clears throat> I, I saw That'd be him, the one thing they'd I let you watch if you were at few, practice. Yeah, I saw him punt a few times. He's got a big leg. He's got the, you know, rugby style. He can mm -hmm. do the things that Cam Johnson used to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. He did not punt well. Didn't Saturday. punt well. I don't know what to make of it, if anything. But the thing well, that, here's the thing that it's the most important playing football. Austin. I've, well, yeah, I know. I've watched, <laughs> you know, a bunch of Urban Meyer spring games, and there is a zero percent chance that he would have let. Uh, Jake Seibert go after missing two field goals. No. He would have had to well, stand out there and make the ten in issue. a row. Yeah. And they just like, oh. And then well. he might have got a water bottle and started spraying him. <laughs> he would have been just, standing right behind him, yeah. right next to him, and you're going to keep going. You're not ending on a miss. They would have stood there and kicked probably Did he make one feet. or miss two? I think he was just 0 for 2. 0 right? for 2. Yeah. Those, those, 2. Are, those are two areas. We're not talking about them. We need to be talking about them. Okay, well, got to get was, those guys ready to run. They were supposed, Will was looking for silver linings, and you're well, just that's bringing the heat about you know, them. We, we didn't mention it. Here's what you're, here's what you're looking for, Austin. I know, that's how I know you're a trestle guy. A mistake-free, <laughs> opportunistic offense, yes. a relentless defense, 
and superior special, special units. Is there a manual that I can refer there, to? There might be. <laughs> I'll bring it in next week. Okay. I read uh, it every night before I go to you bed. You know what? And also, remember who you are. Give thanks and worship. Contact your loved ones. If Contact you your loved ones. If you one. couldn't be here today mm-hmm. at the Letterman Lounge. <laughs> That's great advice. Um, two, two guys that I will name to take a page out of that book. Noah Potter. Uh, you know, didn't maybe make a ton of plays. He's out there a lot, though. He's out there a lot, and he's really bulked up, Bob. I'm not sure Big what dude. what Mickey Mirati's been doing with him, but he's up around 270 pounds, I believe, right now. Did he's they make, move him inside? Yeah, he's yeah. making the yeah. move. So he's making it. And I think that's a really good move for yeah. him. We've talked about guys throughout camp who, you know, G. Scott, and DeMar- that will work. G- Demario, I don't think that will work. But this is one that I think could for Noah Potter. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about some of those guys that Larry Johnson has used with – you know, they come in as defensive ends. They add on. They add on some weight. Get stronger. Yep. Slide inside. Use their pass rush and their speed uh, to really change things at three technique. That could be, be huge. Could be a pretty effective yeah. move for him. And then Cameron Martinez, who you find the right spot for him. I think that slot corner, whatever role you want to call that, got to beat out Demario first. Well, and here's the thing: like Demario may be able to, may be able to do something at slot corner. I'm not optimistic about it. But when he lined up on that first play outside and he's one-on-one against Garrett Wilson or one-on-one on Chris Olave, he got no chance. Well, I there's mean, a lot of DBs in the Big Ten that have no <laughs> chance when you're lining up exact, against those two guys. Yeah, and that's fair. I don't want to yeah, you know, pile yeah, on fair, him, yeah, but yeah. there's that just can't Good luck. happen. I just, it's like Liam Neeson. He might start for Michigan, though. He, well, <laughs> Michigan does need help. They don't have any. They're, they're on the uh, transfer do they even have cornerbacks at Michigan? Well, they didn't have spring camp, so yeah. they did. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I I think that Cameron Martinez has the athleticism to to help in the secondary. And uh, hey, Demario is very athletic, but I don't think he's at a this team. point in time. They just need some bodies back there that can make it through practices, right? right? I need mean, guys to play for Honey guys. High school. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some guys. That was my Mel Tucker Mel Tucker, yeah. We're getting all the throwbacks to <laughs> the mid-2000s right here. That's when when I'm losing control of the show like that. It means it's time to wrap up Letterman Live. Appreciate Nicole Cox, as always, and Roosters for having us. That's Spencer Holbrook, Justin Zwick, and Bobby Carpenter. We'll be back here every Monday as we get through this long off season. We're going to talk a lot more probably about the spring game and a lot more about the quarterbacks until we get to September. Until then, we'll see you next Monday. Come here on Tuesday to get these fried pickles. Mm. Jay Z leaves mm. some for you. Oh, yeah. Appetizer Tuesday at Roosters. This has been Letterman Live. We'll see you next week.